Please tell me I am not alone on this. So you're reading a blog post or maybe you're listening to your favorite podcast. Words like tips, tricks, and hacks light up your brain. This time you really think you can do this. Your fingers tingle, you wanna move, you have so much motivation running through you, you're going to turn your life around and be healthy AF. Motivation is fleeting. Pretend we threw a ball into the ocean and I asked you to track the ball with your finger. It's not gonna be in one spot and that's exactly how your motivation levels change. And you know what, I don't think that's our issue. Our biggest problem is that we wait for motivation to be at a certain level before we actually start doing something. So it led me to question, are we looking at motivation in the right way? And if we're not, how do we ditch the need for motivation when we try to create meaningful changes to our health and life? I can't tell you how many times I've told myself that I'll go for those morning jogs and eat more vegetables. I would always say that I needed the weather to be a perfect 25 degrees, not too sunny, and that I was hurting the environment by driving to the supermarket. It's a five minute walk from home. So one day I told myself, okay, time to get my shit together. I stopped by the markets after work, put on my jogging shoes as soon as I got home and went for a run. While running, I realized that this was actually pretty good. Came home, started cutting vegetables, trying to not cry from the onions. I actually realized that this was also pretty good. Looking back in hindsight, I learned the most important lesson. Motivation is simply the result of action and it shouldn't be the source for action to take place on. Basically, we get motivated when we start getting into the thick of things. It's when we're actually doing something. And that's where I was wrong for such a long time. Every day I would set my goals, like read a book, fix up my accounting, eat more vegetables, and I wouldn't get anything done solely based on the fact that I was waiting for motivation to just suddenly appear. So if motivation is the result of action, how do we get into action to begin with? So there are three things that directly impact the process of action our environment, friction, and the bad habits that prevent us from moving forward. If you ask any serial entrepreneur the makings of their success, they will always say to surround yourself in an environment that helps your goals grow. James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits, says that if you want to improve the chances for change, you need to operate in an environment where it accelerates results rather than hinders them. So what does that mean for you and me? The environmental cues around us, like objects or something like smell or sound, can trigger certain thoughts and desires. In some instances, these cues can be extremely useful, but if you're someone like me who struggles to get shit done, your environment isn't the most welcoming for change. If you're trying to eat healthier, the few things that you could change is getting rid of junk food or at least trying to hide them. And by hiding junk food, we're also not reminded that we have them in the home. So keep your fruit and veg out in the open so there's one less step when you do decide to eat them. The main idea is to have a look at what's around you and seeing what helps your goals. If you wanted to work out more, then keeping your gym bag, your clothes, your shoes, your protein shakes out in the open can really help you. Remove or hide things that draw you in and take you away from your goals, so like video games or Netflix. Speaking of video games, what about those bad habits? Does anyone else get hungry when they watch a movie? As soon as I put on a movie, my mouth just starts to crave something and I eventually do give it in. Now there's nothing wrong with having the occasional snack, but because movies and our favorite series are so easily accessible, we may find ourselves reaching for the Ben & Jerry's once or twice during the week, or maybe three or four times too. The point I'm trying to make is indulging or messing around isn't the problem. It's when we constantly repeat this behavior and it distracts us from the important things like improving our health and creating change. Now when trying to create a new habit or improve an area of our life, Momentum is important. It's sort of like writing an essay or studying for an exam. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes to actually get into the zone. And I guess that same concept can be applied to eating healthy or working out more. You get into the role of something and you don't really wanna stop. However, when we let our bad habits take over, it sort of interrupts everything and it breaks our momentum, opening us up to crumbling and us just saying screw it. Bad habits can be classified as an action that doesn't serve us or steers us away from taking steps towards the greater goal. I guess an example of a bad habit would be to come home from work and instantly grab a bag of chips. Unless you're attempting to be a competitive chip eater, it's most likely going to go against your health goals. Now, when it comes to these bad habits, there's always something that triggers it. So before I get into it, let's just talk about habits. So all habits are a response of a cue, routine or reward. It's a loop, and because the bad habit in itself is so easy to do, 
The loop gets repeated over and over again, and that in itself forms the bad habit. In my personal experiences, the best way to overcome a bad habit is to address the source. So the best way that I've found to effectively analyze what's triggering this bad habit is to brainstorm everything you think that could be provoking this behavior. So going back to the example of those bag of chips, it could be that it's on the kitchen bench, so that's a visual cue. Or maybe it's the fact that as soon as you come home from work, you look for food. And that's the routine. By changing what you do when you get home, it breaks the existing loop and it prevents the bad habit from actually happening. The reason to brainstorm all of this is so that you can find out where you can break the habit. Because now we have the blueprint of our bad habits, it helps us find its weak point. Removing some of the cues, changing the way you do things, or anything really that interrupts the wired routine can create friction to the bad habits momentum. Hopefully allowing you to focus on your health goals on your own terms. I'm not going to say it's easy, but the most important thing is to be consistent and to endure. What that means is to enjoy the process. So to sum things up, motivation is the result of action. Don't wait around for it. And instead, aim for action by changing several things in your environment to help optimize your goals and break bad habits. Has anyone else been guilty of relying on motivation? Let me know down below.